Welcome back, everybody. We're here for the second match of CCSW week number eight. I'm Brimson, of course, with Ace, and we've got Frazier here. Now, we did have a little bit of a mix up there. We're just going to pop up the graphic for you here, just going over the standings again. Uh, now, of course, this won't include our current game or the game that we just played of Queen versus Spies, but that shouldn't change anything. They'll still be sitting in first and second place. Of course, we've got Team Queen sitting in first, Spies sitting in second. We have Team Queen with eight wins, Spies with six wins, two losses. Followed up, we have North Sea Gaming in third with Endpoint in fourth. Then we've got, following them, Samsung, Morningstar's Athena sitting in fifth. B-Titans and Hellside sitting in 6th and 7th. Titanium called Esports rounding out who is currently within the standings to compete for a spot uh, in 8th. And then, of course, Penta Divina and Sphinx sitting in ninth and 10th, and they are mathematically out of the standings at the moment. Speaking of standings, we've got a very important matchup right now coming up. It's going to be between Hellside and Endpoint. Hellside is currently sitting in 7th. Endpoint is currently sitting in 4th. Mathematically, this is a must win for Hellside, but it's got to be looked at the same way for Endpoint here. They must win as well. Now, Ace, when you're sitting in this kind of position, it's high pressure. You're right near the end of the season. What is important for each team to kind of think about going into this match to know and tell themselves how important it is they must win it? Well, I think it comes down to an analogy I use quite often. It's a bit of a football term for any um, English football fans that we've got in the chat. It's a six-point game. So, you know, you're picking up the points, but not only that, you're denying them from the team that you're directly challenging. So it becomes a huge, huge fixture. Um, you know, if Endpoint come in with the win here, they put themselves a good six points clear then in that sort of top half of the table with fighting for those final four positions. So you really do need to remind yourself of the importance. And I think... The bigger, the bigger thing here, rather than going out to try and win the game, is let's go and make sure we don't lose it to begin with. Let's not go, you know, so aggressive and so over the top and so keen to win that we go in making mistakes. Let's make sure that our game is tight. We do what we want to do. We play how we want to play. And then we let the kills roll from there. And then we build and mount that aggression. Very, very well stated. I couldn't agree more. Uh, now, what we'll do is we'll take a look at the members that will be taking place in this match. These are the players that are going to make or break it for their teams here. Uh, let me just pull up the uh, rosters here. Of course, we're on got Hellside Esport. They'll be featuring Laudi, Shanice, Skylia, Delenia, and Ganesh, all of which we've seen each of them at some point take over for their team, step up when they need to. They're going up against Team Endpoint featuring Midnight, Lua, Izzy, Aztec, and Panda as well. All five of those players at some point has come through clutch for their team and stepped up big. Now, Frazier, let's talk about Hellside here. Who do you think on that team is, is poised to have the game that they need to have to see their team have success? Uh, well, I mean, I think all of the members of Hellside are definitely have a you know, have the p potential to clutch out here. Um, I would probably say it's going to be Skylar again. I mean, we saw her mm. last week um, doing incredibly well. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be probably Skylar, uh, possibly Stellinia. I think we'll just yeah. have to see what happens. Yeah. Surely any... we can't write off Ganesh if you've got an actual god yeah. on your side. You know, that's that's <laughs> got to be, that's big plays. Uh, any any standout names for the, either of you? I'll start with you, Fraser. Any standout names going over to Team Endpoint? Anyone that you're kind of favoring at the moment? Ooh. Last week, Panda stood out. Not a surprise whatsoever. Her, her and IQ, mm. Aztec on Maestro. I expect Maestro will probably actually get banned out here, so I feel like I might be a target ban there, but definitely Panda. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be interesting no matter what. Now, it's not just the players themselves but it's going to be the map that they play on for each team, how they, they're they going to settle into that map, use it to their advantage. Speaking of those maps, we'll have a look at where these players want to go and what they want to see here. So let's see what these teams have chosen in the way of their maps. So what what are you expecting here, Fraser? What, what do you think benefits um, Hellside? What benefits Endpoint? Where are I mean, these teams going to want to throw down? Straight away, I'd imagine Endpoint would probably want to ban out Clubhouse. They have a, a, a good history of banning out Clubhouse straight away. Um, I hope we're not going to see another coastline. We've seen that quite a fair bit. Doubtful Border, we've seen them play Bank. They're very good at that. I imagine Hellside probably want to play a different site, uh, a different map uh, to Bank. So probably something technically challenging. 
but nothing to an uh, extreme like Villa. This is it. I mean, you know, we look at it and we know that Villa is one of, you know, the the most sort of technically challenging at this point in time. It is strat heavy and you really do start to struggle a little bit if you're not prepared for that. Like you say, you know, maybe something we've got consular off the board there. I think the teams are just trying to upset me tonight, to be honest with you. I feel I feel attacked, Fraser. Yeah. I'm I'm looking at these and I'm getting worried. I think it's it might be it might be Clubhouse. I might have to eat my words here. I'm, I'm doubtful though. I like Endpoint. They dislike Clubhouse so far. I, I get the impression they probably haven't uh, strated it as much as uh, some other maps, or potentially they have. Maybe that's maybe that's going to be the upset here. No, yeah. there you go. You've um, you've called that Clubhouse would go. Villa is off the board as well. So we're going to be seeing a map coming together on bank and it's one that i quite like to see i like the rome game on there i commented on it earlier you've got the three staircases you've got a number of hatches that you can use to rotate between levels as well and so if you get those opened up ahead of time you really can have some fun out on the rome it's going to be an important question here for both teams is how do we control that i honestly think the team that comes out with the better rome game is probably the one that's going to win this now, I do have to, straight away, I imagine Hellsai will probably ban out Jackal. The reason why I think that, ev for the last seven weeks, they've banned out Jackal every single game. Every single game they banned out Jackal. Is this going to be the week, is this going to be the one week that they don't ban Jackal? I hope not. But, you know, I, th I think that will definitely help out, especially if they try and go for a, uh, uh, kind of deny the, the room clearance there for endpoint. I would say it's important if they do ban Jackal out, they have to take full advantage of that Rome game themselves when they get the opportunity. Because if you're going to take Jackal off the board, that's a big ban when you're looking at bank. There's other very important attackers that you could take off the board instead. So I think if you're going to use that ban on Jackal, you then have to make the most of it. And that is getting out on the Rome, getting the Jaeger out there, even potentially bringing a vigil and just really hitting and hurting teams on the flanks. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be very interesting to see which team is going to be able to roam more effectively. Bank is renowned for having that Rome upstairs, waste as much time as possible. Uh, especially if you're holding downstairs in the basement or in archive towers, I think that's going to be a very interesting endpoint. I I would definitely say they'd be more intimidating as defenders. They tend to play a lot more aggressively. Yeah, I mean we see, you know, it's it's the attacking strategy on bank for any, you know, if we've got any newer viewers, it tends to be get into the top floor. Clear top floor down. Make sure that you've got the roamers cleared because you know they're going to be out there unless you're on a teller's archive. Sorry, not teller's archives. Unless you're on a locker's objective downstairs, in which case sometimes you don't necessarily get the same volume of roaming. That's one of the big sites in Siege where we do tend to see more of a turtle defence. Maestro back in garage, holes opened up through to the plant spot just inside a servers and just really defending at range. But you're absolutely right. Oh, I think, did you say that it was Endpoint that had been banning Jackal? For no, Hellside. Hellside, have, Hellside, oh, Hellside every week. have come in with it. So yeah. You were bang on with that one. And we're going to see Hibana taken off the board to protect some of those all important hatches as well. I, I would imagine the endpoint probably going to go for an Echo Ban, Echo or Mira, and then Hellside, presumably, if they want a target ban, Maestro. Aztec loves Maestro. She's incredibly good at it, incredibly strong at it. It's going to be curious to see who endpoint ban, though. Mira, not too much of a surprise. I mean, Mira, incredibly valuable uh, as a defender. Uh, essentially allows you to hold line of sight onto an objective without uh, risking yourself to too much uh, fire. So we've seen the mirror taken off. Not too much of a surprise. We see that quite frequently. Who's this last defender going to be? For me, I would have to suggest probably Echo. We know that Echo is very, very valuable on bank, especially on that downstairs objective where it can be difficult to get lines of sight directly onto the plant spot as it is often just behind that little corner and obscured by the bomb. So having the yokai drawn there is super important. And there we go. Not too much of a surprise seeing him taken off the board. So that is your operator by we're going to have Jackal, Hibana, Mira and Echo taken out of things and we're going to see, I'm sure, a fantastic game here between Endpoint and Hellside. Now, from what I'm aware, three out of four of those bands were some of the, the most uh, the most banned operators, Jackal, Mira and Echo. Um, it's very interesting to see Habana being used as a band there. I mean, you could either, if you want to ban out Hard Breach, either Thormite or Habana. Thormite 
only has two exothermic charges, which means he can only really get, um, you know, say for example, a hatch and a wall or two walls. For example, where uh, Habana opens up three hatches or an entire wall. I think that's I a think, lot of versatility. Yeah, I think Habana makes perfect sense here. It was banned out by the defenders, so they get to take full advantage of that. Sometimes it's worthwhile, you know, potentially hurting your own attacks if you think that you can do well enough on defence without facing that 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 operator. So in this case, by keeping the hatches safe for those six rounds, not completely safe. Maverick is still an option. You've potentially got a spare thermite charge if all you're opening up is the one server wall downstairs. But I think just by doing that, if you can get a good 4-2-5-1 in the bank, sorry for the pun, because of that, um, that's, that's terrible. Because it was terrible that one, wasn't it? But yeah. you've got to give it. A... Um, so if you can get a good four-two-five-one in because of that ban, whilst you're on the defence, then you've only got to score a couple of rounds yourself um, without uh, without that operator for utilisation. So we'll see how that one pans out. It's always a really interesting um, point of the flow of the game for me. You know, how does the defenders? How do they benefit? What advantage do they take of having that first pick? You know, speaking of advantages here, I would be really worried going up against this lineup of defenders. We've got a Maestro, a Smoke, and the Valkyrie Steam 4. That's a lot of plant denial right there. Plus Guman's with Legion. Like, th this is incredibly intimidating. Like, how would you feel about going up against this? Like, what, what would you be worried about first? For me, the information is key. Really, really important. IQ needs to come in. Panda needs to do a huge job here. She needs to be on that scanner at the minute. She's helping on the wrong clear, just moving through top floor. As I suggested, we're having a, a top-down clearance here. I've seen Jaeger out on the wrong to a degree, but possibly she's moved back to site now. We'll see um, as this roam clear develops. But Panda, for me, is in a very, very dangerous position here because she's moving forward. She's basically the entry fragger at this point. She's the one that's taking instruction as to where the drones are pushing and what they're seeing and then she's moving in to try and impact that but panda on the iq is going to be so so important here because like you say the maestro cams yep they're fairly obvious the lesion mines and the valkyrie cams not so much i haven't seen panda with that scanner out yet really important that she starts putting that to use and finding this utility oh nice kill there by lure good reaction shot however uh, very low health right now. Could have been a very early pick and a very strong pick there for defenders taking out that hard breach uh, before they even have a chance to open up anything there. Uh, unfortunately, still leading her losing her life um, in the process. I'm not always sure how good a first kill Valkyrie is. Obviously, getting that numbers advantage is important, but the cams will be out by now. And generally speaking, it's the player on the Valkyrie that has the most intimate knowledge of those cams, exactly where they are, what angles they can cover, what they can be used for, what they can do. So by taking that player off the board, I always feel like it's only half a player coming off the board because that Valkyrie, if allowed to, is now just going to sit on those cams. And what I mean by if allowed to, that's if Panda doesn't get in with that scanner and clear those cams out. So now, potentially, with that Valkyrie being off the board, you've got this constant stream of information coming in from those cams and the exact player location. So we can see Laudy getting a great kill there, but Aztec will trade that one back out with a headshot from the Capitol. But look at the hit points on the side of Endpoint now. We are down to real minimum, both for the Thermite and the Capitol. So they're going to have to manage that very carefully. We've got Shaughnessy back in the garage, as I suggested on the Maestro. Skillia getting an absolute fantastic double from the Red Corridor on the smoke. One of them with the Toxic Babe. And this is all going to the favour of Hellside here. Shaughnessy getting the kill on that angle that I suggested, but how does that happen? Izzy manages to sneak in and get a little ninja diffuse off there, and that will flip things on its head. She's got an absolute task ahead of her now, but we can see hard pings coming out. Is this the information from those Valkyrie cameras that have survived? Izzy's going to move in, get the Shaughnessy. Of course it won't be. I'm getting carried away here. Um, the attackers won't get the information. Ganesh moves in, gets the kill onto Izzy to finish things off. But that was always... Always on the... Real balance there for that. After that diffuser had gone down, Izzy had the angle to watch it. There was nobody out on the roam. I'm surprised somebody didn't maybe just set straight off up main stairs to come on the flank to blue stairs. Yeah, I mean, we saw it last week as well. Um, Endpoint playing bank again. Um, they, they left it very late 
into the run, like within 20 seconds left of the run before they try and go in for their execute. That's leaving uh, bare seconds to try and get your execute down, cover your flanks, get the post plan uh, uh, kind of underway. And unfortunately, I just don't think that's really worked out for them this round. Uh, I think Hellside, fantastic work by them. Covering that plan as quickly as they did um, and, you know, kind of turning that uh, that silver wall into an absolute meat grinder. So looking towards round number two, then we're going to be heading upstairs this time to tell us an archives hell side, of course, having to move site, having successfully just defended downstairs. So, yeah, I got a little bit carried away in that time. I just got all lost in it. I weren't sure. Um, obviously, I saw the hard pings and there must have been a drone alive in there still. And that's something you've really got to deal with because, again, it was just allowing Izzy that opportunity to move out and get those kills. Ultimately, it wasn't enough, but uh, got to be careful about that. So we can see fairly standard setup coming along here. I'm excited to see the vigil. I want to see what Skylia manages to do there out on the roam. Again, no doubt going to be joined by Laude on the Jaeger, I would expect. Ganesh, Stelenia, more likely to stay in and around site, I would have thought. We know how important those goo mines can be. Ganesh picking up the final kill at the end of the last round that just allowed them to get in and get that diffuser taken off the board as well. I think I sort of look at it and end point for me. They did some good early work getting themselves down into the server room, but once they were established, they just sort of stacked up in the same location there and they allowed themselves to be picked off with by the smoke and the maestro two or three within a matter of seconds. I hope we're going to see a bit more resistance to this top floor clearance here. I mean, we've got three defenders currently holding upstairs right now, I believe that's Shanice, Skylayer, and is that also the Legion or, and the Jaeger? So essentially three people upstairs, four people upstairs. That's a really solid, yeah, three players upstairs. It's going to be a lot of utility and gadgets deployed upstairs. Hopefully they're going to be able to take full advantage of that. Got two players stacked up outside of double, uh, double door there. Lady holding towards stock and janitor i like this yeah this could be a big gamble by the defenders it's one of those all or nothing players you've got three on the top floor if you get a couple of kills for your trouble maybe get one or two back to site then fantastic but how about that for a wall bang headshot from panda going absolutely huge for her team there and taking the jaeger off the board and this is exactly what i said if these roamers start falling without taking any kills without wasting much time shana it is absolutely being peppered here and will be finished off as well midnight moving in and saying good night to shanacy and just getting them now to a five versus three advantage skyly are just bailing out of that top floor so within a minute 30 top floor clear two operators down and that is where i said it was a gamble and a gamble that this round has not paid off yeah, I mean, I can't blame the Vigil for bailing out there. That was an absolute decimation of the defenders upstairs. Um, you got to wonder what's going through their head right now. They they had a game plan of how they wanted to play that. Ooh, that is unlucky timing there for the Vigil. Her ERC running out just as the drone went in there. Um, you got to wonder what's going in through the defenders' head right now. Are they thinking, hey, this isn't really working out. What can we do right now? 55 seconds left. I'd be panicking. I'm starting to wonder what's going through the attackers' heads. They've got themselves good top floor control very quickly, but they got that 45 seconds ago, and we're only starting to see them now pressuring that mid-level. What have they been doing for that 45 seconds? They've got the map for control that they wanted. Aztec moves in. I'm surprised to see Skylia still in that same location. I know that she opened up the rotation, but did nothing with it. Panda will get the kill onto Ganesh, and that leaves Stelenia a very lonely figure on the dock. Insight all alone. One versus five with a huge job to do she hears the plant going down will move out to challenge lua will not get anywhere near as izzy will finish that off for endpoint and that will be round number two going in their favor and that was a good attack from them the only thing i would question is the time it took to move from top floor and start pushing towards site that could have been their undoing there you do have to appreciate how methodical endpoint were with that attack even when it was 5v1, they still focused, they still prioritized on getting that plant down, still getting lure, planting down there in uh, the, the default corner with all of the uh, attackers covering that. That's really smart by them, choosing not to frag out and go for that hunt for that last kill. Prioritize. That's really good. 
Yep, absolutely great players from Endpoint. Don't want to take anything away from them. I've got a question. Um, as I say, the, the vigil of Skylia there gets drawn out. Very unlucky on the ERC timing. Gets drawn out down there in the in the back of the main lobby area, but just opens the rotation, but then doesn't use it, doesn't move away from that location. Even just dipping into elevators, even just, you know, literally dipping around the corner and getting into the cover of elevators, literally anything would have been better than sitting where she sat because we saw then Midnight just move around that corner pre-firing. It was never a gunfight that you were going to win. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of have to wonder what she was planning on doing there. Potentially she was just waiting for a post-plant or perhaps she just didn't really know how else to... Move out from that. I mean, she we saw her make the, the rotate out, but she didn't use it. She sat on the same area where she got pinged. Why? I mean, I, I kind of have to wonder what was going through her head there. Hopefully, she had a idea of what she wanted to do, but unfortunately, wasn't able to pull through with it. As a vigil, you've got to be slippery. That's your main trait. You've got to be really slippery and you've got to be moving around that map a lot. You want to cover a lot of ground. You want to keep the attackers guessing where you are. Keep yourself in your ERC as much as you can. You know, give them the... So when they're on the east side, they're drawn in and they're getting those vigil signals. But then they're drawn in the west side 20 seconds later and they're getting vigil signals. And it just seems like vigils everywhere. You know, that's what you need to be doing. Nice and slippery. Keep yourself moving. You know, you're not one of the big boy operators. You're not Maestro. You're not Doc who just wants to keep themselves rooted to the spot, use those ACOGs and hold angles. So, you know, that's just something to develop as part of that vigil play. And the Jaeger just missing shots there. Loudy sees the operators moving into square skylight area but won't be able to land any shots and just dips away as she is drawn out because no doubt guns are going to start getting trained and focused on that corridor. We can see the Valkyrie there just, again, in those cams, feeding back as much information as possible. I love the main lobby cams. They're always really difficult to find. And again, that's something Panda needs to be doing for a team. She's not going to be doing much of it if she keeps pushing angles like that and just taking shots. She's now down to very low HP. She will get the kill onto Stellenia. Loudy does move up will be unfortunate on the reverse angle there. Aztec managing to see her before she can see Aztec. Skylia will trade that one back out. And we've got Skylia now looking to move across top floor with the alibi and just challenge onto those attackers once again. We've got Thermite. A wall has been opened and drawn in, in looking to just feed back that information. Midnight now established in the office area as well there. Just moving around main lobby. Sees the cam and will put shots onto the alibi and will finish Skylia off as she tries to rotate back down the spiral staircase. I'm not too sure what the plan was there. You know, you can't really run down there with your back to the corridor when you know that the attackers are taking over that area. Shadi's trying to do her best to rotate back up through blue staircase, pushing into square, seeing if she can try and get a pick onto any of the attackers. However, Panda covering that a little bit there. Shanish pushing up the staircase. Undetected so far, looks like there's no flank watch on the square stairs. A bit of a surprise. However, it's not enough as he covering that with a nice headshot, leaving it just For down. Me... And... Sorry, Fraser, sorry. Oh, for me, the rotation there for Alibi is not down spiral stairs. We've just seen Midnight do it. It's you run and you jump over the balcony at the side there. You don't have to go near the corridor where you know the attackers are pushing from. And that way she moves at least safely back to site. If, like you say, she doesn't move into a position to be able to move back up. We see a challenge there. And that is unfortunate for Ganesh. Missing quite a few shots onto the Thermite there. Definitely had the opportunity for the kill. Gets the first onto Midnight, but then will be taken out in sight by Panda ultimately. And that will be another round for the attacker's endpoint. That's the third round on road. That endpoint have gone for the same general room clearance from Square straight along. Take main, uh, take the uh, main wall into CO, push Jan off, and they take top control and then they push down. It's very methodical and it's working so far. I think that's really well done by them. I think Hellside potentially need, need to look at this and say, hey, okay, we're losing too many buddies upstairs and we're not really able to affect the round when we're dead. What can we do differently here? I kind of hope that they're going to play a little bit differently. I mean, vertical control is key here, uh, especially upstairs, but we're just not really seeing it utilised for the defence. Absolutely not. And I think really they've got to think about this Rome game now. Three rounds in the last two, the Rome has pretty much been wiped out without too much sort of contention there at all, really. So either they've got to... There's two things that they can do. They stop playing the Rome game and they start playing more turtle on site 
Or alternatively, I think they play the Rome game with just a little bit aggress less aggression than they have been. We've seen them trying to peek the angles, trying to peek onto the attackers. What we've seen the attackers do, we saw it perfectly at the top of square stairs there. So we had Jaeger had an angle there, allowed it onto the square skylight. She saw one move across the line of sight. She saw two move across the line of sight. There was a third and a fourth moving in behind her. And that becomes a big problem for a Roma because, yep, you might get one of them, but you're going to die after that. So it becomes tricky. And we saw them challenging in numbers like that. So as a Roma, what happens then? Either you get yourself out of the area, you live to fight another day, or alternatively, you root yourself in. You make yourself difficult to approach. You play somewhere away from soft walls and just hold your angle. Keep yourself alive and fight them as they try to come in and challenge you and hope you get one or two and just waste as much time with them having to come and root you out as you can. But it is, again, a high-risk strategy because if they move in, we saw the Vigil try to sort of do similar previously and criticised it. It is just difficult to do that. So for me, I think especially moving back down to the basement level, Get your defenders back on site and just play with five down there. You've already won this site once. Just try and do the same again. I mean, so far we see the same general lineup brought by the defenders. Do you think that maybe bringing someone else, potentially like a three armor with Nekog, like Doc or Rook, do you think that would probably help holding upstairs? Or do you think it's just not really working out for Hellside today? Possibly Doc would be a good option for the roam. Like you say, put him upstairs. Yeah. He can juice himself back up. So if you're finding yourself challenged by multiples, just don't be too aggressive so that you can move yourself back into cover and just get yourself some health back and fight and fight and fight again. You know, we've we've talked before about the sort of the greedy doc tactics and they really can work out on the roam. So yeah, I think you could be right there. That could be a good call. I mean, just purely watching Endpoint and their attack so far, they have been very... Uh, consistent with how they push, they they do the same uh, push onto square and onto balcony, and then take from top. I if I was Hellside, I'd be looking at it saying, "Hey, okay, I'm I'm noticing a pattern here. How can we break this pattern?" And the playable I, I, shield outside of elevators. Yeah, I hold the long angle. Play that for as long as you can with the dock. Stim yourself up when you get shot, and you hold that angle. Absolutely. So we're seeing a couple of kills coming in here for Endpoint. This is another good clearance from them. Aztec getting the kill onto Stelenia there and taking the Valkyrie off the board. We've already lost Laudy and that is exactly coming back to what we've been saying again, Fraser. The two sort of Romers and a semi-Romer on the Valk on Blue Stairs now taken out and leaving the operators in sight with a, an uphill task here at three versus five. We saw Skillia play some very good smoke play from this red corridor previously. So the only thing I'd maybe comment on here from the attackers on I'm not sure if this is becoming a little bit one-dimensional, but just as I'm about to say that, I see Midnight on the Zafia just out in the background there on those main steps. So that may be just a signal that there's going to be some pressure coming from that rear side as well. 30 seconds left on the clock and we see the Toxic Babes coming out. Lua will be able to move in and start to get that initial plant down. Will we see that denied? If the Toxic Babe comes out, Lua will move off the diffuse and just move away, having taken a little bit of damage. The Maestro Cam is going to do its job and that is great play by Shaughnessy there, just getting the kill onto Lua Ganesh with one on her own, just watching that flank and taking Midnight out. Izzy will move in now and start to get this plant down, but we've seen this before. Panda gets a great double kill and that is the pressure that was needed. Shaughnessy gets the free refrag there as she moves towards challenging the diffuser now. The Maestro has it all to do. One versus two. And again, the angles can be watched. I think we have had an attacker move away to try and cover on the hatch. Nomad air jab is going to make things even more difficult. Shaughnessy has got operators, I think, on both sides of her at this point in time. No, she's got one in dirt tunnel and one at the bottom stairs. That's the first kill. That's the headshot. But she will lose attention on the blue stairs doesn't give it a face check and that will ultimately lose to her losing her life and end point successfully attacking the downstairs objective i do have to say it's incredibly admirable uh admirable i can't even do words uh oh panda that is the second week in a row she's playing iq and she just runs into sight and she murders everybody like she is pretty much just an sas para commando super ninja right now she's just getting frags out of thin air how is she able to push into sight get two kills and with no real consequences. Um, Absolutely. I think 
great attack from endpoint there they had pressure from both sides i know midnight didn't really make too much of that main stairs push um but it was still worthwhile it still took the defenders focus away from sight like you say panda just running in there and just absolutely taking everybody out taking uh, taking no prisoners whatsoever and it just left them in a great position i, I wasn't sure if it was sort of slipping away from them when the diffuser went down we had the maestro kill come in and we had the toxic bay being used so well i really just thought it was slipping away from them a little bit at that point but endpoint showed some good resolution and they didn't allow that to happen and they just kept fighting we're going to be heading back downstairs here in round number five now and this one not proving to be just as close as i thought it was going to be coming into it so far yeah i mean definitely playing bank again for a second week i would have imagined that hellside would have had some expectations of how endpoint would be playing here potentially if they'd watched i, I presume that they would have watched all of the games from last week they would have seen how endpoint would have attacked this how they would have defended this and if you were to compare the two vods i would imagine it's very similar um and yeah i mean it's working out so far for endpoint we need to look at it more as okay what can hellside do right now that would be a bit more effective they brought out the dock with a uh, stellinia i believe that is um Hopefully that'll add a bit more resistance to their defense and a bit more resolve. I mean, so far they've been mostly running with uh, uh, only one ACOG with Maestro, so hopefully that's going to help out a little bit more. Stellini holding inside of server. Midnight going for the same tried and tested routine of taking Skylight uh, or Square Stairs and uh, pushing from there. I like this. It's If it looks stupid but it works, it ain't stupid and this ain't stupid. It's working out for endpoint. I think you've commented on it, Fraser, and you were absolutely right. The same push is coming in time after time, and there's nothing wrong with that for the attackers because it is working. What I would comment on is the defenders in this case because they don't seem to be picking up on that. They could be in a position ready to challenge, get more aggressive, play close to that double door. Don't allow them in there. Just, you know, as soon as that double door starts getting knocked out, get a nitro underneath, throw it up there and see if you get a kill that way. Just anything you can to really challenge that because that is then going to throw endpoint away from what they are comfortable doing. And then you're going to see a different team. It's not to say that you definitely win the round because of that, but you put in there on the back foot and you're not allowing them to play their version of siege not allowing them to do what they want to do which is at this point all they're going to do is keep rinsing and repeating that yeah i mean from my limited competitive experience if i could provide a suggestion for i said it would probably be put out a chunker up in ceo and just open up the entire ball watch into double door and i'm sure you're probably gonna get one or two kills what could possibly go wrong with that it's a perfect strategy all right 200 <laughs> iq right there 200 IQ to Chanka players, as always from Fraser. Best to Chanka EU, absolutely no question. So we're going to be um, coming into the final minute now. We've not had too much progress, a lot more tentative here. Lua will move in and get that first kill on the Thermite, though. Stelenia taken off the board. That will be the dock and a big loss. We can see Ganesh has not been picked up down here in server, though. Midnight with a pre-placed Claymore will get a kill onto the Roman Laude. But Ganesh is going to have to be cleared off here, and that could be a seriously important double kill with Thatcher and Thermite going off the board. Ganesh just hold, hard holding server here. And this is sort of another version of what I suggested. Ganesh there recognising that the push always comes through server. So let's not have them moving in there quite so easily. Aztec will finally get that kill, but will take a lot of damage for the pleasure. And they are now restricted. They don't have a Maverick on the board, so they can't open the wall. They're going to be restricted to pushing in through the single door. Great kill from Skillia there onto Panda. She knew that there was an operator there. Pops up and gets a fantastic headshot. Midnight now moving through the rear of sight and will get the final kill. Endpoint showing some great adaptation to mid-round chaos there to get the win. Incredible hold right there by Ganesh. Holding on the lesion inside the server. Holding on for as long as she did. Holding on to blue stairs as well. Uh, from two uh, attackers, I believe that was. That was incredible play right there. Very unfortunate that Izzy was unable to secure a, uh, a refrag. But that was an incredible hold right there. It's very unfortunate. Especially imagine if she had managed to hold on to that for as long as she did. And uh, Midnight wasn't able to push from behind. That would have left Endpoint in a very sticky situation. They wouldn't really be able to go for a plant. Would have left them having to go for kills. And that's exactly what they did. They did, and that was unfortunate for Hellside there. I thought, as you said, it was a very good defence. Like I say, they were just recognising, as I commented on, what is this team doing each time? 
They're doing the same thing each time. I don't think they really maybe picked up on the fact that Midnight was approaching from the rear side every time, but they were low on operators at that point, so it would have been difficult to make that challenge. But they did that very well, and Ganesh really did hard hold serve there. And what that's going to do, it doesn't just, you know, yeah, it didn't benefit them in that round, but what it is going to do is waste time in this round because they've come down there again. So now endpoint no. They can't necessarily just run down blue stairs and into server because they lost two very important operators during that time and were lucky to pick up the round. So now I'd like to see Hellside come out and just use that aggression, use that confidence, get themselves under square skylight, start making that a more difficult entrance. Don't allow them in there easily. Um, you know, we don't have any we don't have any C4 on the board, I don't think, but we do have Toxic Babes on there. We do have a Maestro. You know, anything you can do to get a cam up there, make them know that they're being watched coming in there. Put any sort of challenge you can onto them. Don't let them feel comfortable. Yeah, I mean, another adaptation coming out here by Kaed. Um... I like this. It's again they're showing that they're learning from the previous rounds and they're saying, okay, maybe this isn't working out. Let's try something new. And they bring uh Kai likely with an ACOG. So now you've got two ACOGs, you've got the goo mines with Legion, you can delay a lot of time and hold them at bay and hold them at a long line of sight. And hopefully, yeah, it looks like uh Shanice. How how do you pronounce her name? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll go with Shanice. I'm, I'm going to say Shanice. I could be wrong. And if I am wrong, apologies. I'm Scottish. I'm not supposed to be able to speak English correctly. So, you know, there we go. No, I've uh, been saying Shanice, which is just as it's spelled. And that probably makes me a complete um, a complete heathen, to be fair. So, I mean, well, we've got a 50-50% chance of getting it right, I guess. We'll go should... with Shanice. All right. All right. No, um, we'll go with Shanice. I like Shanice. Yeah, you got a very aggressive hold right now inside a blue. Interesting that they're going to try and risk that. Uh, again, I like how they've completely dropped off from holding upstairs. It's fair enough. I mean, I'd be pretty intimidated trying to hold upstairs after, what, four rounds of complete decimation upstairs? I like it. It's fair enough. It's understandable. Hopefully, that's going to pay out. You know, they've got one minute 25 left and all of Defenders still alive. That's fantastic. Better def yeah, absolutely. Better defense this time around. Like you say, they've managed to survive for a lot longer. As I suggested a couple of rounds ago, just dropping off the roam because they've been having no success with it at all. And this is a site where you don't need that roam, essentially. So uh, by having played it in the last few rounds, it has still wasted time without the risk in this one. We can see the hatches there been opened up and Panda oh. doing a great job with a shot down onto Loudy there to start things off. So that's going to be the headshot. Loudy has really been suffering with those opening kills i think she's been you know one of the first operators off the board in most of the rounds so far so that's been tough for her so far but she has been trying to mix a game up it's not for the want of trying and sometimes we just have those days where we yeah, find ourselves in the crosshairs repeatedly we can see skillia here just holding in red corridor very aware of that hatch but it's not an angle she needs to challenge shanice uh, getting a great kill onto midnight and that is what her team needs at this point just to start bringing that numbers game back to the same Ganesh, again, it's a big risk. You've got your two kills. You've got away with it. But that sort of hard-holding server is something you only get away with once. And they've moved in and proved that with getting the kill onto Ganesh now, leaving us four versus three. It is very late round, though. But Lua will start to get the diffuser down. My Panda gets the kill onto Skillia, but the Toxic Babe was detonated. Lua will get the diffuser down now, though. And it forces Maestro to move around and ultimately... They will get picked up, and that will be another round going to endpoint 5 1 now. Yeah, just watch how effective they are at getting that execute. The they push is one uh, so far. I mean, they're getting the plant down, and as soon as that plant gets down, they're either a holding on top of, of, of Hatch with the with the IQ and uh, the Hands of Panda, who is doing very well right now. 10 kills, 3 deaths. Oof, that's uh, traumatizing. Uh, yeah, but then you've also got Midnight pushing from Main Staircase. There's so many angles being opened up here by Endpoint all in one go. That's been set up throughout the entire round. It's not as if, it's not as if they're sitting on their ass for like the first minute and a half, two minutes. They're setting up for a late execute, and it's working out really well for them. 
It is indeed. So heading into round number seven then, we will be flipping sides now and we will see Endpoint going on to the defensive. Are they going to do any better? We quite often see this where a team comes out and absolutely dominates on attack or dominates on defence, gets themselves 4-2, 5-1 up as we have done here. But then when the sides switch, they just can't maintain that momentum and we just see the map playing out with a real attacker bias on that day or a real defender bias on that day. So is that something that we're going to see or are we going to see Endpoint continuing to dominate here? We will, of course, know within the next couple of minutes because we'll get a very good feel for it coming off the back of this defence now. How are they going to do things differently to to help Sadia? What are they going to do differently, do you think? Yeah, I mean, the fact that they brought an Ash kind of indicates to me, hey, okay, we're going to play a little bit more aggressively here. And hopefully that's going to pay out. I mean, we see it as, exactly as you mentioned here. A lot of teams, they will find their kind of second wind. When they move over to attack, they feel a lot more confident, a lot more aggressive. They say, hey, okay, maybe the last couple of rounds won't necessarily in our favor. However, we're attacking now. We've got the momentum. Let's make what we can with what we have. And... I, hopefully, I, as you said before, hopefully they're going to play their own game. Hopefully it's going to pay out. 30 seconds into the round then, we can see Laudy making some quick progress on the Ash as we would expect. I would imagine she's just being drawn in there before heading into open area. Shanice is just going to get the drawn back round there and I think she will pick up Izzy, but there is a Valkam in there to support her so that the shout will hopefully come out when this push moves in. Shanice looks like she was actually drawn in herself there and it's always a bit of a dangerous game. She was quite a distance from the area that she was drawn in into. As it is, Izzy has remained in the same spot. She's obviously confident of that being a strong angle, but Shanice doesn't know that for sure and she's in a position now whereby that drone was 20, 25 seconds ago and that information could all have changed by now and Izzy could easily have moved to a new angle so she really does need to just probably recheck that and get on the drone and make sure that that is still the situation. As it stands, we don't have any great map progress yet. Midnight on the Valkyrie has been allowed to remain out on the roam. We can see, I think, Panda is in the same situation as well. This was something that Endpoint actually did very well on the attack, was move in and clear out those roamers and get that map control. They worked methodically from Square Skylight. They cleared out the top floor and all the way down, but that is not something we've seen Panda just getting hit by a Nomad air jab there as she moves down the stairs to try and get herself back onto site. Shanice is just going to be holding that angle still and again it's gaining them no great progress midnight will be downed but will get the kill onto Laude in the process and that is all that she needs to do as a Roma is waste two minutes and get herself a kill we can see now the progress is starting to build a little bit but we've still got an end point player down here in server yeah, I mean, we're not really seeing too much aggression coming out by Endpoint, besides, obviously, the Valkyrie upstairs. They're playing fairly passively downstairs, and they're holding on to the server. And so far, Hellside haven't been able to really push that aggressively. Panda pushing up to uh, at midnight now, getting her back up to full, uh, or back up to her uh, fine capacity now. She's pushing over towards square stairs, potentially going to be trying to fight out Blue. Very interesting position to be in for Endpoint. You've got five players. 20 seconds left, Skylier, Ganesh, and another player all inside the server. That is a big shout from Panda there to move and get Midnight back onto her feet. If she successfully moves to this hatch now, that is absolute end of the round. And we can see it coming here. Nitro Toss will do some damage. She can oh. see the final player. She gets the kill onto Stelenia. Skillia has no choice but to get this diffuser down. Midnight with another kill at the end of the round there. Great plays from Panda and Midnight. That is a good example of how to work as a roaming duo. Panda making the effort to get all the way back up. Always get operators back on their feet if it is safe to do so because you have no idea what they are going to do for the remainder of that round. And that shows it perfectly there. Absolutely fantastic play by Midnight. Fantastic work by Panda going up there, getting up, realising, hey, all right, this might be a risk, but it's an educated risk. We're going to go for it. They manage to get Midnight up, and she ends up getting three kills uh, on, what, like 20 HP? That's insane. That's fantastic work by her. And just imagine that round could have played out entirely different if Valkyrie was dead, if there was no C4. Uh, they would have been able to get the plant out, potentially. 
Yeah, I've, I, unfortunately, I do have to criticise Hellsad on that defence there. Uh, sorry, on that attack. You can't have somebody downed on the top floor for a bottom floor objective that is then allowed to be picked up. They basically had no idea that the Valkyrie was downed but still alive on that top floor and they had no way of covering the main stairs flying. To be honest, if it wasn't midnight, Panda could have done exactly the same thing because she rotated all the way upstairs to the exact point where Midnight was picked up. If Midnight was dead there, she could have just moved across the landing and done exactly the same thing herself. And they had no flank watch in place whatsoever. They had no appreciation for the fact that somebody could just move up and across top floor like that. And once you're in server and that hatch is open, that is your big weakness there if you allow them to get control of that hatch and that vertical landing. Yeah, I mean, it's exactly as you've just said there, flank watch. All right, flank watch is absolutely key, especially in a map like Bank, where it's very easy for the defenders to rotate up through a certain staircase and flank around you and get behind you. Having that flank watch there, something covering upstairs, even if it's just like a drone on blue or like a, a drone on square or having somebody covering that. Like, if you don't have the players, then you put a drone there. You watch it, okay? Because you're guaranteed in a post-plant situation or close to post-plant, somebody is going to try and rotate around you. It's, it's Rainbow Six Siege 101. You get around somebody and you shoot them in the butt. You know, that's simple enough. It is that simple, and we've just seen why it's so simple. So <laughs> we can see this time the Maestro Cam has been played out on Square Skylight. I'm not sure how long that is going to survive for as Loudy moves in, but we are playing the for the first time, I think we're playing the top floor objective here. So yeah. it's going to be a bit more of a direct push onto site, I would imagine. Not too much use for lower floor roamers. We've got Maestro playing in that elevator position that I suggested earlier, potentially for Doc to prevent this square push. As it is, Aztec will move in and get the first kill onto Stellenia. We're seeing very quick progress here. A minute into the round, Thermite is looking to get that wall open. But as they try to push anywhere but those potential breaches, they're just going to start losing lives, lives to Aztec here because every time she peeks, it's an absolute nightmare with that Alder and the ACOG. There we go. Shots are being exchanged now, but Shanice will manage to get a great kill, and that is exactly what Hellside needed. They needed Aztec moved out of that location. They could not afford to leave her in there. As it stands, there are still players on the road. Midnight looking to move back up the stairs, hitting them on the flanks again. They haven't learnt the lesson that they did last time out. Laude will drop out of the game, but had already been killed, so that now leaves us in a four versus three. Shanice is on low health. The walls have been opened. Progress has been made for Hellside here, but there is still a lot of work for them to do in this last minute. Yeah, I mean, we've got 50 seconds left. The walls open. Best case for them to do right now, try and start holding those angles, get a kill or uh, two it and then go for that plan. I mean, 40 seconds left now. A lot of this is mostly just setting up, get a plan down. Skyly again, a kill onto Panda. Uh, that is the Valkyrie and the C4 down midnight holding at the end of Banana, holding on to the long hallway. Izzy getting a nice kill to Ganesh, that is a headshot. And an impact trick coming out there by Izzy again, that is really good work there. Uh, denying that second will be opened by, uh, by Skylayer. Uh, Izzy just so low defending there, getting the kill, getting the impact trick. No messing about from her whatsoever. Skyly are now trying to work those windows. We know they can be brutal on CEO, but they will not be brutal enough today as Lua and Midnight move in with one apiece to finish that round off and finish the match off with an absolute sweep in favour of Endpoint there. Oh, it just goes to show how much practice can affect the round. Endpoint, it looked like they had practiced that dozens of times. It looked like they know what they want to do. They know how they want to proceed with it. And they're working together. Like, we're seeing each other droning out, refragging each other, getting that flank watch set. And yeah, I mean, it shows midnight. 13 kills, 4 deaths. Wow. It really does. So, Hellside, I think, you know, there's takeaways for them from that game. I think they just need to learn to adapt a little bit quicker to what a team is doing and what's not working for them. You know, they lost a good few rounds by losing those roamers in the early game. And also, they didn't really adapt to the fact that it was the same push every time. And if they'd st then you can set a trap, you know, then you're prepared for them and then you can start hitting them when they're trying to get into the building and force them to do something different. And I think that's in time something that Hellside need to pick up. Yeah, I mean, I'd take a guess and say that Endpoint probably had different strats of how they could attack. They just didn't feel the need to use them. 
Uh, I mean, again, at work, they did the same thing almost every time with minor alterations here, here and there. And at work, they won the match. That was really good by them. Hellside, I think they've got a lot to learn from this experience. If you don't disrupt what a team is doing, as you say, there's no reason for them to do anything different because now Endpoint are happy to play Bank next week because they've got more attacking strats that they've not had to show. They've never they've never had to use them. So, yeah, disrupting what a team wants to do, disrupting option number one, plan A, is super important. Yeah, no, I, I think that's really... Hit the, hit the nail on the head there. You know, Endpoint, they did really well. And it showed. Uh, hopefully, Hellside can take from this, and hopefully, we'll see them play again on bank, and potentially they'll be a bit stronger for it. You know, they've learned a lot of lessons here. I think that's the best thing you can say about it. Well, that was a very, very good match. Uh, it would seem now that Endpoint has all but secured their fourth spot there. It's not looking very good for Samsung, Athena, Morning Stars, and the rest of the teams, uh, kind of in that mid pack looking in. I believe that would pretty much put Hellside mathematically out of contention uh, and possibly some other teams, but we'll have to delve into that a little bit more. Uh, was this an example, uh, I'll throw this to you Ace, was this an example of Endpoint playing tight that won it for them or Hellside maybe playing a little too fast and loose and being their own downfall? Where did you see it kind of falling more? I think it's I think it's more down to Hillside losing that one. Unfortunately, I'd never like to to get on teams' backs. Like I say, you know, there's, there's mm -hmm. plenty for them to learn from this one. At the end of the day, we never really saw Endpoint push to do something different. We never saw them push to rotate to another side of sight. We never saw them really face much adversity. I think there was one round where Ganesh got Thatcher and Thermite killed before they could breach the server wall, but they still managed to clean things up there. But that's what I wanted to see more from Hellside was putting Endpoint in a position where they had to think, where they had to do something different, where they had to change it up and make those important mid-round calls. And that never really happened. So for me, unfortunately, it's down to a little bit of sloppiness on Hellside's part. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, fantastic match. Nonetheless, of course, we had uh, finishing off a 7-1 to one victory in favor of Endpoint over Hellside. We'll go to a quick break, a uh, quick five minute break, grab snacks, grab water, whatever you need to do, go to the washroom. And when we come back, we'll have Titanium Cloud Esports going up against Penta Divina. We'll see you guys in just a few minutes.